Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to talk to you guys, talk to you men, the debonair and the insecure. Yep, sometimes we ladies forget how insecure you men get as well. I know once I married my husband and he passed away, I, you know, we were married 15 years. And I noticed when I looked at his clothes that he had a way of dressing. It was fun. I mean, it was fun. We go shopping for his clothes and I learned so much about men's fashion dealing with him. And like I said, he dressed richly. He wasn't flashy at all. And what I want to say to you men, some of you are aspiring to reach the top, correct? And some of you think that as a way of letting people know that you stand out, sometimes you jut out. I mean, you are strikingly standing out there. And you, in some ways, are overcompensating for either feeling like you might be something or a type that they might not want, or you, your age might work against you, your race might work against you, your looks, whatever the case may be. But let me tell you something. If you have what it takes, to do what you're there to do. And you're trusting in God to help you? I'm telling you, God can give you favor. But you have to ask God to give you self-esteem, a higher level, not conceit, not narcissism, but just self-confidence where you believe in yourself more and you even believe in God more and his ability, then your confidence is not built on me, myself, and I. But look what God did in me. Whoa, what a difference. And there lies your confidence. Or as they say, therein lies your confidence. So some of you need healing and, and we recognize that. Because we know that a lot of you men have been raised uh, by other men who have told you boys don't cry. Other men who have, uh, you have seen their example and you realize in the culture of being a man that in a lot of cases men don't deal with feelings like women do you seem to either be detached or you work at remaining detached because you don't want to feel the things that sometimes you must in order to receive your healing or in order to facilitate or appropriate your healing. And I'm going to tell you, some of you men need to have a great big boohoo. I mean a serious boohoo. I remember one time my husband and I, we were in the middle of something and he got frustrated with himself and it was the blindness and all of this was coming down on him all at the same time. And he literally broke down and, and sobbed. But it was sad because he was saying, I'm not even a man. But he equated his manhood with his blindness. And I had to keep telling him, your blindness is neither here nor there. That's like the Queen of England saying, oh, I'm not a queen anymore because I got a zit on my cheek. Duh. Come on. So I had to work with him in that area and constantly let him know he's more man in a wheelchair, blind, crippled, and hopefully not crazy than all the men I dated put together. So you men have to go through some healing. You really do. You, you can't just muzzle through life and 
muddle through it and figure, okay, it'll work out at the end. No, you got to work that thing. And I'm going to tell you how. That's right. This woman's going to tell you how to work it. And this going to sound gross. But you know Pat and her two cents has a way of being gross with her examples. And I'm going to get there. Years ago, my husband had an issue with constipation. It was just like a, a season of it. And we constantly had to buy all this different stuff, fiber and everything, try to help him till we finally realized it was what he was insisting on eating so much of. And once we got him more on the vegetable end of things, oh, away went troubles down the drain. Now, what I notice about constipation is if you wait too long and you let it pile up and pile up and pile up, do you know it can become a life-threatening situation? And I have worked at convalescent homes where patients have had to have surgery on their bowels because they were, the term is, impacted. And men, I am here to tell you, you have been impacted too long. Get that crap up out of you. You will find your patience, your level of love, your kindness, your consideration, your peace, all of that will rise to a level you never thought it could get to. I'm telling you, healing brings so much freedom. Healing brings so much beauty back into you. Once you get rid of all that stink, healing, healing, I'm, I'm serious. It is a blessing, but you got to start working on getting that out. So you have to get before God. Do you hear me? You have to ask God to please Get inside of you. Take out all those insecurities. Tell him where you're insecure. Where do you feel like you fall short? Ask him to help you accept yourself for who you are. The good, the beautiful, the fantastic, the bad, the ugly, the pitiful. Just accept it all and let's start revamping this thing so we can get the best out of it. You know, some of the most beautiful things come from ugly beginnings. Look at a diamond. Yeah. So don't think that all the ugly that's in you and all the shortcomings and all the fallacies are your crippling agents. No, they're not unless you give them power. But if you go to God, God can take, he works in paradoxes. God will take those things that you have been pointing at, pointing the finger at and, and cursing the day you saw those, those faults. And God can take those faults and turn your heart into a thing of compassion. Compassion. I'm going to say it again. Compassion. And you can be a very sweet vessel in the hand of God as you handle his people in ministry, in, in family, in all kinds of situations. Because now all of your weaknesses have turned into something beautiful. That's why God says, I will give you beauty for ashes. Give him your ashes. Give him your trash. Give him your mess. Give him your emotional scars. You'll be surprised at what God can do. Oh, man, he can turn you into a vessel of triumph in his hands and help you teach others how to get theirs. But first, you have to admit some things. Things like, okay, Lord, I'm a mess. Or, I can't handle things well. I, I blow up and I make a bad matter worse and I do it all the time or Lord I'm out of control like a, a, a patient who can't hold their water and they pee on themselves before they get to the to the urinal okay they might have to wear a diaper well when you are like that emotionally 
whatever's in your head flies out of your mouth before you can catch the thought. Whatever's in your mouth slaps somebody upside the head before you can catch those words. And it acts as a knife and it just cuts them down and cuts them down. And you wonder why they're not the woman you marry. It might be because you have been the one damaging them because of your lack of control. You know, the Bible calls temperance. It's a gift, it's a, uh, not a gift, a fruit. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's why you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. What the gift of temperance will do, the fruit of temperance will do, is enable you an extra second to think, to rethink what you're getting ready to say. How is this going to affect her? Am I going to tear her down even more because I'm in a bad mood, I had a bad day, when it really wasn't even her fault? And what if it is her fault? Do you have to? Do you have to stab her with your words? Must you? Think about it now. Is that really necessary? Do you think God is pleased with you handling your emotions that way? You know, sometimes the, the strongest men are the kind of men who can turn around, say, we'll talk later. Right now, baby, I got to pray because I'm definitely not in the spirit of God. Close the door, get in your car, get away, get silent, get to yourself, turn the cell phone off, turn everything off and get your tissue and cry. I mean, let God know how things are crashing in on you and how you're having a hard time and ask him to help you. And while you're at it, go back, reach back a little bit in retrospect and say, Lord, you know, that kind of thing has always been the thing that would make me go off. It makes me fly off the handle. Why is that? Please help me. Please heal me. If there's something where I haven't forgiven and I'm still angry, and look, dig for it. You may find that yourself. Then confess it. You know, Lord, that makes me angry. And I'm still ticked about how that went down. That was, that was low down and dirty. And I still don't like it. And when I see anything looking like it, I go off. I fly off at the handle. Lord, take this this resentment out. Take the rage out. Take the anger out. Take the, the my tongue, my the unsharpen my tongue, soften my words, sweeten my words with your love. Because my love is not enough. I'm still way too mean, depending on my own kind of love. And my love is way less than the kind of love you give. I'm asking you to give me the gift of unconditional love. Enable me to love your way. Sweeten me up. Tenderize my heart. Help me to understand what's going on with my wife or my kids or whatever, your boss, whatever the case may be. Make a real man out of me, Lord. A Jesus man out of me. One that would please your heart. Put a smile on your face. One that would make you look good, make other people want you. Because I'm telling you, hurting people hurt people. We already know that. That's a given. But if you're being healed, then guess what? Healing people help heal people. And when God begins to heal you and your heart and your issues from your past and the memories, the hurts, the insecurities, and all the deliverances you really need to have, you will begin to find yourself loving at a much higher level. And you will find your love enabling your wife to blossom rather than shrivel. You will enable your children to blossom rather than shrivel. Because when you, if you raise a child and they start stuttering, Oh, baby, you better check that out real fast. If they weren't born stuttering, but they start stuttering, 
there is deep damage being done to that child. And you better dig that up and find out what it is. Ask God to show you if you can't seem to figure it out. It might be you. It might be the kids down the street making fun of them or the kids in school. It might be your wife, his mother. But it's something is happening and it's happening through someone. Start digging through yourself first and sit down and ask your child. Don't be afraid to be criticized. Have I been saying anything or doing or acting in a way that makes you get nervous when you're around me? Tell me the truth. And let them know they can say whatever they want, that you love them. You may never have told your child you love them for whatever reason. But don't let your scars stifle your child. Don't let your scars stifle your wife. Please. Go to God with your, with all of your issues. I don't care if you've been molested, raped, ridiculed, whatever has happened to you, abused as a child. Go to God with all of that. He can heal it. God bless you, my brothers. All right. Amen.